Do you feel stuck? Do you feel like it is too hard? Do you feel like you have tried before and it doesn't work? Do you not know how to change? Does it even matter if you change? Life is short and doesn't have to be that way. Let me help you live your best life. This is Jason Williams, DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel. Today, I wanted to talk about low carb, high fat diet and the support for interventions like this. If you are my patient already, you know that I am in favor of low carb, high fat diet and lifestyle for a majority of patients. There are many reasons for that and this video will not go into all of those. I just wanted to discuss a framework for why low carb, high fat intervention and lifestyle should be considered. In a prior video, I discussed study analysis, review of journal articles, and some of the things I look for regarding effectiveness of certain interventions for patient treatment. Nutritional studies are very interesting in that they often do not have significant funding and study sizes tend to be quite small compared to pharmaceutical company sponsored clinical trials. As a physician, I would like to have the most information with the largest sample size population in order to make effective decisions. I realize that this will be a limitation with many nutritional studies. The financial benefit from nutritional study can be significantly less than might occur with a pharmaceutical sponsored trial. I have to accept the fact that some of these trials will never happen. That doesn't mean that a certain nutritional intervention doesn't work though. I would bring a couple things to your attention. There is what's called the Verta Health Study that is well done and it has shown remission of metabolic syndrome and diabetes. It has also shown the ability of the investigators to de-prescribe medications in many cases while their diabetes metrics improved at the same time. This study will continue to garner more attention as people become aware of its existence. The Verta Health Study is one example of support for low carb, high fat diet. It is a well done trial that shows remission of diabetes and also concomitant decreased or deprescribing of medications while patients with diabetes are improving their glycemic control or blood sugar control. As the study becomes more widely read, it will become part of physician decision-making. Another support for low-carb, high-fat diet is the American Diabetic Association. The American Diabetic Association director herself is a low-carb, high-fat advocate. The American Diabetic Association has acknowledged that low-carb, high-fat diet is an acceptable intervention for lifestyle modification in diabetics. If you scour the internet, YouTube, Twitter and other social media sites and input low carb, high fat or keto or Mediterranean diet, you will see tons of hits. If you look into the data and actually listen to the stories and take them to heart, you will see that thousands and hundreds of thousands of people have improved their life with low carb, high fat intervention. This is the power of anecdote. If you have anecdotal evidence, it is certainly not very strong for a physician to use that to make decisions. However, if you have anecdotal evidence for hundreds of thousands of people with the same result, then you have to weigh that very heavily when making decisions regarding an effectiveness of a treatment. People that say that low carb, high fat intervention has not been proven or trialed are kidding themselves. If you look back to 1977, and you think about Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys was a physician that felt that fat was our problem. He felt that fat was causing vascular disease and increased risk for heart attack. Like it or not, he was a very influential, outspoken physician and was able to garner support in the government. The government passed the nutritional guidelines in 1977 that recommended significant reductions in fat content. The food pyramid at the bottom had six to 11 servings of carbohydrates, grains, breads, and cereals per day. 
It also recommended three to five servings of vegetables and two to four servings of fruit per day. And then as you progressed upwards in the fat component of very limited amounts of fats and sweets, this was a departure from the way that we were used to eating. If you look at data, you can see that we actually did follow the government's advice and markedly increased our carbohydrate consumption as a population. Now that we have the benefit of time looking backwards, we can see the myriad effects of this change in diet. The effects are many and are beyond the scope of this particular video, but just to summarize a few, obesity rates skyrocketed, type 2 diabetes rates skyrocketed, multiple chronic health conditions that did not used to be very common skyrocketed, including dementia, autism, multiple types of cancer, inflammatory conditions, polycystic ovarian syndrome, infertility, erectile dysfunction. So don't kid yourself, you are already in an experiment. The experiment is being done and you're part of it. As people, it's very common for us to forget. History tells us that we knew how to treat diabetes, for example. If you go back to the time of William Osler, a very famous physician, you can see that they treated diabetes very specifically with diet carbohydrate reduction. If a patient had diabetes, Dr. Osler would restrict carbohydrate intake until patients no longer peed out sugar. Once they determined the appropriate carbohydrate intake, then patients were advised not to exceed that limit. Advances in technology, although good in many ways, can be detrimental in other ways. One example of that is insulin. Insulin was created in the 1920s and certainly can be life-saving for type 1 diabetics. When insulin is used for type 2 diabetics, we actually wonder if this is really helpful or not. At the time that insulin became available, a shift in practice pattern was noted, and physicians now allowed patients to eat more carbohydrates. They just administered insulin to counteract the effect. I think that we made a mistake as a population recommending increased carbohydrate intake. Many other agree with me. Early on in my practice, I did not know all this information. I gave the same standard advice to my patients that I was taught, and my patients didn't get better. I admit that I was incorrect and wrong in my practice at that time. I did the best I could with the information I had. We have a health crisis on our hand and we should admit that we are wrong and that there's a better way. In a former video, I talked about statistics and analysis of research. If I think about low carb, high fat intervention within the model of number needed to harm and number needed to treat, it seems very clear to me that this is a very safe intervention for most people. In any type of intervention, I weigh the risk-benefit ratio. This one seems to have a huge upside and very small downside. People, I want you to live your best life. I don't have enough time during my office visits to discuss all of the things that I want to discuss. Hopefully these videos can allow patients to have a peek behind the scenes to understand where I'm coming from. This is Jason Williams, DO. This is the Williams Family Medicine Channel. Keep in mind that any type of information that you hear on this video is not intended to be your own personal medical advice unless you are seeing me as a patient. See your own doctor if you have any questions about your health. Catch you on next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.